As I said, our theme for tonight is finance, and what I'm going to do in the next couple of minutes, I'm going to show you how to calculate N with your compound interest formula. But don't worry, a lot of people seem to have questions on calculus. You can still phone them through on 08600 6284 All right, now let's quickly have a look at the financial maths question that I've got for you tonight. When we are calculating N, N is our time period. So it is always a dead giveaway if the question says how long. You put a certain amount in the bank, how long before you draw out twice as much? Whenever we see the keywords how long, we must know that they are asking us to calculate N. Now let's have a look at the question that I've written down. It's a relatively simple question, but I just want to show you guys the principle around calculating N. Right, Tabo invests 2,500 Rand at an interest rate of 9% per annum compounded annually. He withdraws 48,817 Rand and 78 cents. And the question asks us, how long did the investment run? In other words, how long does he need to have his money in the bank at that particular interest rate for him to withdraw 48,817 and 78 cents. Now, I would think that it would be quite long because basically he's doubled his money, but let's have a look at how we will calculate that. Because the formula tells us that it's compound interest and it's compounded annually, we must remember to write down our compound interest formula, and that is A is equal to P, 1 plus I, to the power n. Right, now it is not that difficult to substitute into this formula. Remember that A stands for the end amount, the amount that you get at the end of your investment period. So therefore, A in this case will be 48,817 Rand and 78 cents. P stands for what did we start the investment with? What is our initial amount? And the question quite clearly said that Tabo invested 24,500 Rand. So we'll put that in. Right. Now with our interest rate, we must remember that we must write our interest rate as a decimal. Now in this particular question, we don't have to divide by 4 or divide by 12 or anything like that. Because if we can just look at the question again quickly, the interest is 9% per annum compounded annually. All right, so the, the percentage is per annum and it's also compounded annually. So we can use the 9% just as it is. As I said, it's not the world's hardest question. So we write that as a decimal. That means we divide by 100, so that's 0, 0,09. Now, as you can see, our unknown in this particular equation is n. So we just have to do a little bit of manipulation to make n the subject of our equation. The first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to divide both sides of my equation by 24,500. I do that so that I can get the bracket on its own. So I'm dividing this side by 24,500 as well. All right, now if you do that, you will find that you get, and I'm just going to write our unknown on the left-hand side just because it's a convention. Um, inside the bracket, we get 1,09 to the power n. And when I divide 48,817 Rand and 78 cents by 24,500 bucks, I get roughly 1,9925. You guys are using your calculators, so you can check this. All right. Now, the problem that we have in this question, and I don't really like to call it a problem because it really isn't a problem, is that our unknown is in the exponent. Now, if we have an exponential equation like 2 to the power x is equal to 8. 
That is very easy to solve because what we'll try and do is we'll make the basis the same on either side. So we'll say 2 to the power x is 2 to the power 3 and voila, x is equal to 3. But it's not that easy in this case. We don't know what power we have to take 1,09 to in order to get that as an answer. And what we're going to do is we're going to use our log laws. So what we do is we put a log in on either side of our equation. Remember, with any equation, as long as you do the same thing on both sides, it's not a problem. Right. Now, why did I put a log in on either side? Because if I have a log in front of the 1, 09, it means that I can take that exponent in and I can bring it to the front of my equation. So now I have n log 1, 09 is equal to log 1, 9925 and some change. And in order to now get n on its own, I'm going to divide both sides by log 1, 9. So this is going to give me log 1, 9925 and all its decimals divided by log 1, 09. Those of you, um, you could also, it's very important though that you, that you do make a bracket. You say bracket log 1, 9925 divided by and another bracket log 1, 09. But on our fancy calculators, what we can also do is we can write it like this. We can write the log um, 1, 09 as our base. So we can say log of 1, 9925 and our base here can be the 1, 09. Those two calculations are exactly equivalent. Now, if you do this correctly, you will get to an answer of 7, 999, I think. And that is so close to 8 that I'm just going to say, well, it is 8. And I'm going to say that investment ran for approximately 8 years before his money almost doubled. Now, in this case, we got to a whole answer. We got to 8 years. But what if you do your calculation and you get an, an answer like, for instance, 7,5 years? Now, we don't really speak about 7,5 years. Nobody will say to you, in 7,5 years time, I hope to be married, or in 7,5 years time, I hope to be driving a fancy car. We talk about seven and a half years, or seven years and six months. Now, it is very important that if they ask you to give your answer in years and months, or years and days, that you are able to do so. Now, let's say our answer was 7,5 years. That's a pretty straightforward one. I will say seven years, and to convert that decimal, the 0, 0,5, to months, you simply multiply by 12. So you will get seven years and six months. Now that's not terribly complicated. I think most of you will say to me, but I know that 7,5 years is seven years and six months. But what if it's 7,4,3,2? Then it might be useful just to remember to do that. Alternatively, they could also ask you to give your answer in years and days. And then what we will do is we'll take the whole number, we'll say 7 years, and we'll take the 0, 0,5, and we multiply it by 365 days because there are 365 days in a year. So then your answer will be half of 365 days, and that is 182,5 days we don't really talk about half days, so I would probably say that that can be written as 183 days. So very simple. If you are asked to calculate the time period, how long, in a financial math calculation, fill in all the things that you do know, and remember that you're going to have to put a log in on either side so that you can move your end to the front and quite simply solve for n. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs>